Okay, I'm going to try to put um, a whole bunch of stuff into one video. Um, if you were in class the other day, you know about Mini Bridge down here. Um, if you don't, just ask me and I can sh I can tell you. And you should know how to go file new and make sure that you're using. Um, it doesn't have to be 300 resolution, but I like to use that. That just means it's gonna not be blurry if we ever printed it out. Um, and you can do whatever size you want. Um, RGB, um, of course, is for the computer screen, and then CMYK is if you're going to be doing printing. And then you say, okie dokie. And we had a lot of questions about um, this. Um, so let's talk about it real quick. I'm going to hold the shift key down so that this doesn't distort, because if I don't do that, it's going to look kind of weird. Um, another thing somebody told me is, um, I mean, I know you can hold the shift key down, and it keeps the ratios of the picture, but someone told me that you can just click this little lock right here, and it'll do the same thing. Let's see if they're right. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's cool. That's why I like um, facilitating at our school so much, because we can learn from each other. Okay, so now then, because I know if I was going to print this out, I wanted it to be 8.5 by 11, I have this weird thing right here. Um, I want to show you how to do, use content-aware so that you can fill in space. Um, it's really good for skies. It's also good for all kinds of things. We talked about this a little bit, that that's a smart object. Um, and sometimes you can click on uh, See, it works. And you can go rasterize the layer. If that doesn't work, because mine doesn't work sometimes, I just come up to Layer, Rasterize right here. Okay, It's grayed out because I already rasterized it. Um, so let's use Content Aware to fill in the space. This is really cool. So I'm going to click this little rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to choose just the edge of the picture. And then I'm going to say Content Aware Scale. I'm going to get my little double arrow right there and just slide it over. Is that not the coolest thing? Hit Return and then hit Command D. And it filled in this space, which is really cool. Let's see if it looks good up close. Okay, it made the couch bigger. It made the pictures bigger. It missed something right here, but that's all right. That's pretty close. Okay. I think it's like magic. Let's try it again up close so you can see. Content aware scale. You get those two little arrows, and you just pull it out. Hit return, and then Command D. Okay. Content aware just means it looks at what's around it to fill in the space. Okay, so let's go with our little mousey mouse. I'm going to show you something. I showed some of the classes yesterday, um, but since then I've kind of figured this out a little bit better. Um, I'm going to turn off the background just so that we can just concentrate on this little guy. Um, we're going to get the quick selection tool and make sure you have this little button clicked right here, new selection, and we're going to very quickly select our little mouse. And then if we get, like if it goes off of the mouse, like right there just a little bit, I can hold the Option key down and bring it back in just a little bit. Okay, and see how it's hanging off a little bit right here? But that's okay, because we're going to fix that. So this is really cool. We go up to Refine Edge, and what it did is it hid everything in the background. It's still there, but it's created a mask. Um, you can experiment with these and figure out which one you like. For this particular picture, I think it looks good on um, a white background. Okay, now the edges are really rough, as you can see. So what we want to do is, this is already clicked in. It should be, like a default. And we can just kind of, it's a brush, just kind of brush around the areas that you want to see better. Like these little whiskers. See, that whisker showed up real good. See, it works when y'all aren't watching me. <laughs> That's what I always think when y'all are watching me, everything goes wrong. Look at a live demo. Okay, now see that? That's a good example of we want to hold the Option key down, and we want to tell it, nope, that's not what we want. That black thing, I've tried to get, it, get rid of it, and I can't. Let's see if I can get rid of it while y'all are watching. Yeah, I've tried, and I can't get rid of it, like in this, in this where, where we are right now. So see, what we're doing is we're getting the little hairs to show up around our selection. And right here, there's something weird going on, so I'm going to hit Option and just kind of go back and get that a little bit. And the videos that I've watched, they say to use, let's see if it'll let us choose, like a smaller brush to be more precise. Let's see if that helps this area that we were having trouble with. Nope, it's still doing something weird right there. Oops. It's, for me, it's harder to do with a little brush. 
Okay, and now you can't really see what's going on. You can't really tell. Like, I think something weird's going on right here. And so we can switch it to on black. That actually looks good. There's something weird right here, so I'm going to hold the negative. I mean, I'm sorry, the option button. Let me make this. Oh, you can hit your brackets on your, like, right above where the return button is. Right above that, there's two brackets, like an in bracket and a, a clo two closing brackets. So that's what you do to make your brush bigger or smaller. I'm not sure what's going on here. Okay, another thing you can do is you can move this, and this sometimes changes stuff. You have to wait a minute, though. It takes a little bit of time for it to think. Okay, it's changing just a little bit. I think I liked it better right here. It's all your judgment. What do you think? Okay, and so... There we go. That See, the black and white is the best, because you can see how there's something weird going on there and something going on here. And so I'm going to, um, actually, I'm going to move this back down because that's probably what did it. You have to wait for a second sometimes. Okay, I'm going to hold the option key down. Let's get rid of that because let's get, try to fix these. Nope. I'm going to do Command Z because I liked it before. Let's make the brush a little smaller. And it's just like anything, it's just experimenting. Like just now, I forgot to hold the option key down. That's why it didn't work. I was like, what's going on? So I just, with the, you can see right there the plus sign. I had the plus sign, and I did it. And then now I'm going to go back right and try to fix this with the negative sign. Just I'm holding the option key down, which means take away. And I'm having trouble with that. That's okay. That's good enough. And somebody in the class reminded me that you can put this on a new layer with a layer mask. And if you want to decontaminate your color, sometimes that helps too. Sometimes. Um, and I'm just going to say, okay, and let's see what it looks like. Okay. He doesn't have a background behind him, so we don't really know how good it is until we put the background in. There we go. I think that looks much better. Um, so to, I'm on the right layer here. I'm going to do Command T to grab him, which means to transform. I'm holding my Shift key down, and I'm going to get him so that he fits in this little window. And just like we did in class, let me show you how. There's lots of ways you can do this. Um, you can use a mask where you um, you mask him off, which I think is what I'm going to do. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Okay, he's in the place where I want him. I'm going to hit return. Um, I'm going to lower the opacity of him so that I can see the window behind him. I'm going to make sure I'm clicked on the mask right here. I'm going to hit D to make sure that this right here is the default colors. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to hit B for brush. And I am not sure if it's going to make him go away or it's going to make him stay. Okay, this is the opposite of what I need. So I'm going to hit X. I'm actually going to hit Command-Z to get rid of that for a minute. Okay, so I found out I had the wrong color, so I'm going to just hit X. Look down here. X makes it turn to black. And see, that get, that's getting rid of him. Now, right now, my opacity is only 83 for my brush. So I'm just kind of testing it right now. I'm not really masking it off on purpose. I mean, um, like for real, I'm just kind of checking them out, because I can't really tell exactly if it worked, so that's making, say it didn't work very good, so let me zoom into him, and use a smaller brush, okay, and so if you do something like that, you're like, oh no, I'm, something's not right, well, it's real easy to fix, let me go ahead and get this, it's real easy to fix, because you just hit X, and it'll bring his little fur back, is that his little foot, no, I'm going to get rid of that little foot. So I'm going to hit X again. That would be cool if that was a real foot right there in the picture. If we had a foot. I don't think his foot's in the picture, is it? No. Nope. That would be cool, though. A little creepy foot sticking out of there. Okay. So let's zoom out. It's command and the negative sign to zoom out. Um, something's not right here. Let's kind of fill that in just a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to take it off and then look like that. Looks good. So let's say that we want to create a lens flare, which is where the, the light's coming from. In this picture, it looks like it's coming from over here. And we want to make sure we're on the layer that we want to put the lens flare. And this was really weird today. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. Okay, it's going to work for us. So you go to Filter, Render, Lens Flare. And this is where the lens flare is going to go. You can move this around wherever you want. You can even put it right here on the, the light if you wanted to, I guess. Um, and there's different kinds of lens flares down here. Somebody in one class said they like um, using these and like changing them. Like those are like little stars, I guess. I'm just going to use a plain old lens flare. And you know what? I'm going to actually move it out of the picture like that. You know what? I'm not going to do that. 
Okay. Okay. So that is a little bit too lens flary for me, like too too bright. Okay. Now what I just noticed is that I cannot do I can't change the brightness of this right now because I've already put it there. So I'm just gonna hit Command Z. Command Option Z. Okay, it went away. I'm going to click on this layer right here. <clears throat> And I'm going to do the same thing. Filter, render, lens flare. And I'm going to realize right here I can move this down a little bit because it was just way too bright. If you want more control of your lens flare, what you should do, it, it's kind of tricky. Um, I'll show you in another video. You just create a, a layer with black on it, and you can actually put that lens flare on um, a black layer. And then you can move it around and change the opacity and all kinds of stuff. Um, another person said that they really wanted to make the mouse like darker on one side. Let's make him darker on this side since the light's coming from over here. Real simple, come down here, do brightness and contrast. Make sure it's above this little guy right here. We want it, This is the mouse right here. Option. Okay, so we have the brightness on top of the mouse with this little thing with an arrow going down. You can also click it right here if you want to. And then now I'm going to... Since I want to add darkness to one side of him, because he's perfectly okay on this side. If we want to darken one side, we're going to lower the brightness. And I know that looks funny, but hang on. And you can do, just kind of move this around if you like. Okay, so now then, what we're going to do is an inverted mask. You just hit Command-I, and the darkness is underneath this mask. So all I have to do is hit B for brush, and make my brush just a little bit bigger. Make sure you have a soft brush, and you can even like lower your opacity whatever, and then you can just kind of color like one side of him. Okay. We can darken the whole thing if we want it. No, I'm just going to... Okay, so Command-Z. I'm holding Command-Option-Z and just hitting Z back, 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 back. And if you want to see what it looks like, what difference it made, we can turn it off and on. That made a big difference, actually. Okay, make sure you're clicked on this, and if you needed to take off some of it, you just hit X and it'll take some of it off if you wanted to. And then before and after, before and after. I like this because it makes his little whiskers show up better. Okay, um, I'm trying to go as fast as I can. Um, okay, so if you wanted to give some kind of shadow around him, there's a hard way and there's an easy way. So here's the easy way that you can add drop shadows is you click on the, the layer you want one, and you come here to effects and blending options, Make sure you're clicked on drop shadow. It has to be blue for it to work. And we can experiment with um, a shadow. Now the shadow, since we just made the light coming from this direction, let's put the light coming from that direction. Let's see here. This is like, um, <laughs> I was going to say cheesy way. The cheesy way to do it. I always try this way because it's the easiest before I actually try to color in a cast shadow because that's really hard to do. So to me, that still looks like a sticker kind of. Stick in there. Experimenting is the important thing. Why does it keep doing that? Let's see. Okay, and so I'm going to say okay. And here's the drop shadow here. I'm going to see before and after. I don't know if I like it or not. I don't know. So I'm going to show you how to change like the wall color in another video.